Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Just Believe Podcast. I'm your host, H.B. Mack. And today I'm honored to have this lovely young lady come on and share her story. She's an author and a blogger. If you don't know, now you know. Her name is Iris. Hi. <laughs> well, good, good. Thank you for coming on. I, I appreciate having you. Um, I saw some of your work on Instagram. And, you know, now with the pandemic, I think all of us are more glued to our phone than ever. But it's been a, a gift to me because I've been able to connect with people similar to you and like-minded and that's doing phenomenal things. And I was like, oh, man, I got to have her on. And I just want you to be able to share your story, let the people know about you and where they can find you at. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I started the blog, uh, Noir Memoir, uh, probably about October of last year. And it had started as a uh, military spouse blog, actually. I was um, engaged to a guy in the Navy. And um, like most spouses, they set up little blogs like detailing their travels and adventures and their kids' lives and whatnot. But um, my ex fiance broke up with me all of a sudden. Uh, and he made me leave our house in four days and oh all goodness. sorts of stuff. And, uh, I didn't know what was going on, and then I just decided, like, you know what, I want to heal from this. I don't want to jump into a new relationship, which is what I was doing before. Like, I never really took time between relationships to really think about what was going on with myself, or how to improve myself, or even just accept myself. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I started the blog just detailing, like, okay, uh, my first healing post was called um, Grow Where You Are Planted. And it was um, basically like when I was in Guam, I was having kind of a really hard time connecting with people because I was growing and I, I realized like, okay, you know, I don't really need to be blackout drunk every weekend. That's not very healthy. Yeah. <laughs> and I started going to the gym. I started reading more. I was continuing my master's degree and like I was maturing and I thought it was because I had found the love of my life that I was able to be a better person. But within my healing journey with the blog, it's become me being a better person because I want to be a better person yeah. and I want to heal. And um, I also served in the Air Force and I've struggled with my mental health um, concerning that. Uh, so it's been battles with trauma, PTSD. I got diagnosed with bipolar a few years back and um, it's just been kind of learning how to live with all of these things. And yeah, how to juggle it with the pressure of life. It and to learn how to thrive actually, because <laughs> like I think most of my life I've been in survival mode and right now is the first time in my life. I'm 31 and this is the first time I actually feel like I'm thriving and growing and like, I've, I've made leaps and bounds in who I was as a person and just in the last year alone. So it's, so far it's been going well and I've been meeting a lot of people like, like you and um, I have a, kind of like a support network online and it's, it's, ugh, it's so great to have to just be able to like message someone like, hey, do you have space for me right now? Yeah, I, I need to say yes. Let me get this off my chest. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's no, wonderful. No. Yeah, it is. I think um, it's something that you said that, I feel like, man, we, we do connect because when you're in a relationship, you, you sometimes don't, you don't focus on yourself as no. much as you should, <laughs> you know, people are like, Oh man, make sure you love yourself. But you know, you hear it, but you don't understand it until you realize, mm -hmm. wait, I'm too much. I'm too invested into this person. Yeah. And now that they left, Oh my, what do I have? You know, yeah. now I got to pick myself up and learn <laughs> and it sucks because it, you know, you're in pain, oh, but yeah. then you realize like <laughs> after the growing pains and you, okay, let me get up off the couch. Let me stop bench watching and just actually do something that I love to do. Let me challenge okay. myself in a way where I never challenged myself. I've been there, done that. It's like, man, I'm so invested into this person. This person <laughs> has their plan. And my plan is we're going to get married. We're going to have yeah. kids, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and they're like, you know, they're like, oh, man, I'm going to college or, hey, I want to move here. I want to move there. And you realize, man, they have individual goals and I don't. Mm. Let me actually get my individual goals situated. Let me go in house. And our 
situation, I did have my individual goals, but like if you were married to or in a relationship with somebody in the military, like the military just comes first yeah. pretty much. So they tell you what to do. <laughs> you just got to roll with it. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm glad that you was able to, to pick yourself up and challenge yourself in a way where you probably didn't believe. Like, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> man, first of all, a year ago, I was at rock bottom. Now look at me. Now I'm able yeah. to connect with people, get the right support that I didn't have before, mm -hmm. you know? And, and it's key, I think, with social media, um, it's one of the things that I love, right? Because I got a support system that I had no idea about. Like, yeah. you know, once I started sharing my story, like just a little over a year ago, people started DMing me and supporting me. Yeah. And then like, um, I had a passing in the family over the summer due to, so to uh, it, it, unfortunately, it's part of life now with yeah. the pandemic. So the pandemic affected my family and I just was mentally, I just needed a break. You know, I try to do like my posts every day and uplift people, but I wasn't uplifted. So I'm not going to fake it for everyone. Mm -hmm. and I took about two weeks off. And the, the DMs that I was getting from people was outstanding. Hey, are you doing okay? I don't care if you don't post. Are you doing okay? I was getting a minimum of 10 a day. And it's not from the same 10 people. And I was just like, yeah. man, this is, this is amazing. This is amazing to, to actually, I don't physically know you. Yeah. Virtually, I know you. And this is amazing that you, you live all the way in Chicago and you're checking in on me. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, and it feels good. It, it gives you that that confidence of, okay, okay, yeah, okay. It's, it, it's cool to just vent to this person because they actually care about me and what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was good. So yeah, when- I've, um, I've had some people like from as far out as like Turkey, they've been like, hey, <laughs> yeah. I really like vibe with what you're saying. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, I had somebody from the <laughs> Netherlands that DM me and I was just like, <laughs> okay, you're following me. All right. And they wanted like some tips. And I was like, oh, sure. You know, no problem. And they're like, oh, thank you so much. I think, um, <laughs> you know, with Instagram, it's so hard. These bots, like, you know, they might DM oh. you. So it's so hard to see if it's real or not. But then yeah. like, to actually get a real genuine person, it's outstanding. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So <laughs> what was what was the first thing that you realized? Like the first effect, like, I guess you would say, downfall that you like okay I gotta work on this this is the weakest part that I have right now let me improve this I have a penchant for negative self-talk it is like a constant uh, barrage of just mean things in my head all the time and I swear I've been doing this probably since I was like five or six years old <laughs> um Mostly because I, I was like a really anxious little girl and I, um, I was not, <laughs> I was not a cute child. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I had uh, like very thick Coke bottle glasses, braces, just like the whole nine, like your typical little nerd girl. Yeah. And my face was always in like Harry Potter. <laughs> But um, I had a lot of trouble making friends and I would tell myself it was because I wasn't good and I would tell myself that I hate myself. And um, since I was a military child, I moved every like three to four years and it was like going to a new place. Uh, like for example, we moved from Mississippi to Alaska <laughs> yeah. in 2000 and it was this process of, okay, I have to try and make new friends. No one's going to like me. They're going to think I'm weird, blah, 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 like this and that. And um, that's been the biggest thing for me to overcome probably in the last year where I've just, um, as soon as I hear myself say something negative, like, oh, you're dumb. You forgot to turn the laundry on or the washing machine on. Um, I'll be like, you know what? I'm turning the washing machine on now and yeah. I'm proud of myself for remembering instead. Yeah. And it's, it's, oh my gosh, it's so much better. Like, I don't feel like my head is a toxic place anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. Was there any steps that helped you out? Was it just a blog or was it something that you was doing differently to help you improve the negative talk and turn it into positive talk? Well, uh, first I gave my uh, the inner critic, I gave it a nickname. So I named her Karen. And I told her, like, 
<laughs> I feel bad for anybody named Karen nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> the name is not a blessing anymore. <laughs> but uh, I named her Karen, and I would just be like, "Be quiet, Karen." Yeah. And like, I had to actually say it out loud. Mm-hmm. Like trying to say it um, internally wasn't working. Um, and then I started like throwing myself celebrations like yeah. mentally just for doing little things like you know when you're training a puppy to like go outside yeah. <laughs> I was basically doing the same yeah, thing I was just treat. like woo, pots and pans yeah. And then, uh, like yeah I did it today <laughs> yeah. but, I um, loved it I love it of, like instead of um using like negative reinforcement like punishing myself for missing something it was like Oh, I did finally remember to do that now. Like, yeah. woohoo. And, Let me stop being so hard on myself. I exactly. actually did do it. I didn't do it the time I wanted to, but I did it. Yeah. Exactly. No, I, I had to do the same. I, um, <laughs> we are very similar. I was talking to myself negative because of the past, the trauma, yeah. right? The, mm-hmm. the doubts that happen, especially when you're a kid. Like, kids are mean. Not, well, not yeah. because, like, you know, they tell the truth. They tell the truth in a way where it's like, oh, hey, your breath stink. And it's like, <laughs> Dude, you could you could tell me yeah, like you gotta say it in front of everybody. You gotta <laughs> say it in front of the whole class. You could have just pushed me to the side, and and like that, that that can affect you over time. Mm-hmm. You know, I can imagine moving around and trying mm-hmm. to get acclimated with new friends, and you're you know wearing these coke bottle glasses, and people are like, oh, she's nerd. <laughs> She's into Harry Potter. And it's like, yeah, oh, Harry Potter is awesome. Until the movie comes out, everybody's like, I love Harry Potter. You yeah, know? right. Right. Like, yeah, no, I was it. an OG fan. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I did the same. Um, You know, I I gave mine a name and a voice. Mm-hmm. And it was like a Daffy Duck voice. So, when like something, <laughs> dude, are you going to take Daffy Duck serious? No, you're not. You might no. get out of here. So, and, and, but amazing. that helped me out mentally. Mm-hmm. When it was like, you know, I, I used to be so hard on myself. There's there's a deadline I'm trying to achieve by the end of the week. And sometimes life happens. Work, mm-hmm. you know, work, you get overwhelmed with schoolwork, whatever, and you mm-hmm. don't hit that goal. Instead of me being so hard on myself and turn that into a negative where I want to chug a bottle of Hennessy, it's like, yo, it's all right. I didn't get to it Friday, but I could probably get to it by Monday. Mm-hmm. You know, and then that voice would be Daffy Duck, like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, whatever, dude. Like, I'm not taking you serious anymore. This is my life, you know? Mm-hmm. And that helped out so much. No, it's outstanding. It's outstanding. Yeah. Now, you was part of the Air Force. Mm-hmm. How was that? Um, it was interesting. Um, Are you I still was... in there? Or you, you already oh, did no. your... <laughs> okay, well, thank you I for got, your um... services. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like... I, when I graduated high school, I didn't really have a, a set idea of what I wanted to do. And um, my mom was an officer in the Air Force. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go to college and, and become an officer too. And um, I got an ROTC scholarship, which helped out a lot. So like, I didn't have the, um, the debt to worry about because yeah. I know that's placing like so much stress on our entire generation. And that's one thing I don't have to worry about, thank goodness. So, but um, I ended up serving, um, my first duty station was in Washington State, and then um, my second was at Hurlburt Field, um, which is like Fort Walton Beach, Destin area of Florida. And um, it was an experience. I just, I think I had a different sort of perception of the Air Force because I was a kid in it. Yeah, so. you, you, already, you already knew what to the spec yeah like yeah, oh, like, oh, yeah. this, is, my, this uh, is what's gonna happen yeah my mom um she was in in medical and she's married but if you're like a single woman in, in the military it's it's uh it's an experience so yeah. no i'm glad you use that to your advantage um i remember when i was in high school um the navy was trying to recruit me oh really and, yeah and, I, and I, I was thinking about it you know i'm I was lost. I was like, yeah, I don't yeah. have, you know, I, I don't really have a role model. Um, I don't have no guidance. I really don't know what I want to do. And when I thought about it, um, the whole 9-11 just happened. Wow. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I was, uh, I think I was like sophomore, something like that. I can't, I can, I vaguely remember like the year that I was in the school year, but I remember that. I remember being in class and even though I was in the Bronx, you seen like the, the black clouds all, yeah, wow. all over. It was crazy. And like after that, like the Navy guy 
he was calling and we we connected in a way when i was just like man i don't don't know like my parents already lost a child right and now this happened like yeah i love my country but at the same time i don't want to pass on that pain from Mm -hmm. my my you know that my my family just experienced so i i denied it he was like oh man but you could be ranked you know you're really smart and all and i'm just like dude no no Mm -hmm. thank you i appreciate it but thank you and I don't know, that whole 9-11 changed everything. It sure did. It yeah. sure did. I changed was, everything. Um, I remember we were living in Alaska at the time, and I remember I was getting up, getting breakfast for school, and my dad just happened to have the TV on, and there's just like one tower mm-hmm. smoking, and then the next yeah. one, and it was like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. And, oh man, it was one of those things where it's like, yeah. it's life-changing, especially um, in the Bronx, like, our, if you had a cell phone, it was not working. Yeah. So I'm trying yeah. to reach out to like my, my family, my family's down like near there that worked there. Like my aunt was down there. We didn't hear from her. The subway was shut down. And I remember running home and you see that the first tower and then you see the second one. It was, it was crazy. It was like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. It really made you um, appreciate life. But mm-hmm. then the weird part about it, it took chaos and something like that for everyone to be together. Mm-hmm. Now we yeah. fast forward years Years now, you see the pandemic. Now you see everyone together again. And now they're talking about mental health. Where before it was like, you're going to see a therapist? Oh, we can't be yeah, friends. Yeah. You know? So it's like, I'm, I hate to say this. And I've been saying this on every episode. Uh-oh. But this <laughs> pandemic, no, but in a weird way, this pandemic was a blessing. You know, in a weird way. Like, yes, some people have died. And yes, some people are still going through their trauma. But now, you, I, I personally started seeing therapists who was charging a lot and have an insurance company. And they're like, no, we're, we're doing free sessions. Mm-hmm. We're doing free sessions for the month of August, for the month of, and I was like, that is beautiful because now yeah. the mental health, it's needed. Definitely. It's needed. Like, you know, not only for just being quarantined and locked in the house, but we're being affected by it in a way where it's like, we never been down this road. So I think exactly. it's, it's, it was a gift on that way where people are talking about mental health and therapists and counselors and psychiatrists are giving back in a way where people are like, thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you. And now people are looking at essential workers as people and not just, really? <laughs> hey, hey, there's, hey, I need this in the back of the aisle, you know? And it's like, oh, yeah. no, they, they, they're thankful for them. So I, I think that's what the pandemic to me was like a blessing to really appreciate people and really talk about mental health Mm -hmm. granted that we lost people and I was affected I lost a few people due to coronavirus but it was something that like we came together and I think on that you know okay when somebody talk about mental health this is not a joke anymore they're not a a nut quote unquote Mm -hmm. they're they're a person that just have bottle up emotions and they just need to learn how to express themselves or if they need whatever prescription that the psychiatrists give them, it's okay. It's just helping them function. It's not a weakness. It's a superpower. Yeah, I, I definitely know that the, the sort of the stigma is, is lessening because um, my, my parents are from Jamaica and Grenada and mental health is not really uh, prevalent there. At least it wasn't while uh, they were younger. And um, I do... When I think I got hospitalized, um, probably in 2014, and I don't think my dad really could wrap his head around me having depression and PTSD. And he was just like, can't we go to church? Can't we, yeah. like, what can we do? Do you want to pray, let's pray this out? Yeah. Yeah. He was like, do you trust these medications? And I'm like, I don't trust myself right now. So if someone's telling me, hey, do these things and we'll see how it goes and maybe you'll get better. Like they're I'm, a professional. I'm gonna li- I'm gonna listen to them and not to knock the church, but these are professionals and then right. like, it might be something more. I might I may have a chemical imbalance. We don't right. know. Let's exactly. let's do let's find this out. Yeah. No, I think that yeah. was that was big of you to hey dad. I respect you and your, and your religion, <laughs> but there's something wrong where I don't trust myself and, and being in that situation myself, I've been there and it's like, Oh, Hey, you know, I try to do the whole church thing. And I'm like, this is a lot. No, I, I actually need help. Yeah. I actually need help. This is not a, a 
a dis- disconnect between me and God or me and the right. universe. This is a disconnect between me and me. <laughs> yeah. I need to learn how to get back to myself. Yes. No, yeah. that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I applaud you for being courageous and sharing your story with the world. Like yeah. it's, that is a superpower <laughs> in itself. It's been, it's been an adventure. Cause I know like even in just this healing journey from this past year, it's been up and down, back and forward. I've made a couple of U-turns, you know, I've been like driving down the wrong way to the street, basically, like just yeah. mentally. But like, I would say I really like rounded the, the corner of like feeling better probably toward the end of July. Um, I, I had to get ECT, which <laughs> that was an experience. Um, it's, thank goodness, it's, it's not what they portray it to be like in the movies. Um, I think it's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and, and Requiem for a Dream, like scared all these people yeah. about <laughs> ECT. But you literally, they, they put you to sleep and you're out for maybe like three or four minutes and um, you wake up and uh, they just keep doing the therapy and like when you start seeing results it's like it's drastic like um I think the uh first round I did um I think maybe after the fourth or fifth session like when I woke up from the anesthesia like um the nurse cracked a joke and I actually smiled and he's like oh my hearts and stars you're smiling (laughs) like (laughs) and um yeah it, it was pretty amazing but it was it was one of those things where I was terrified of doing it like I mean I, I pretty much know the drill when it comes to like oral medications, but yeah. when they're like, okay, we need to put you to sleep. It's like, uh, oh, this is different. <laughs> hold on. All right. All right. Are you sure about this? Yeah. But, um, yeah. I, I had really great results and anyone that I've spoken to um, that's had ECT as well. Um, they said, yeah, it was, it was like night and day after I uh, hit a certain point. And um, I've had actually a lot of different treatments Um I think, what was it, January of this year, um, I did ketamine infusions. Uh, that's a thing. <laughs> How was that? Um, they basically send you to the moon, like, mentally. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> so they do an IV, basically, and um, the ketamine, it, it makes you trip, but I guess it, it in the same sort of like resetting your neurons yeah. sort of thing and um it was it was actually very helpful I, I know the first two sessions I had I cried a lot but it was because like I felt like I connected with my pain so. yeah yeah and you're probably yeah. seeing it for the first time like that close like okay right okay right this is um, the real issue let me learn how to but be yeah okay with it, it was yeah beneficial. it was it was very beneficial and then one thing that I'm looking to get back into doing um, is actually, um, have you heard of float spas? Uh, no. Oh, man, somebody, somebody was in my DMs talking about it. Oh. <laughs> no, this um, is recently too. Somebody was just talking oh, wow. to me about it. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm going to look into it, um, you know, uh, because they went through it. And mm-hmm. it was like, oh, did, like, they was asking me what the process that I did. Um, when I checked myself into the mental hospital and I just told them, you know, I was like, literally I was sitting there. I didn't take anything, um, which was the battle with the psychiatrist during the time. He was like, yo, you're not leaving until you take this because you know, you have a chemical imbalance. And I was like, dude, we didn't even talk for five minutes. Right. And right. you know, I'm like, you talk that me or whatever. And I remember like us playing Uno, right. It's probably like 10 of us. We're playing Uno. We're, we're chilling. And the nurse gives out every, the medicine. Um, my ex-girlfriend, she was like checking in on me or whatever. And um, she had called me. And when she had called me, she, I was like, hey, you know, you're in the medical field. What's this? What's that? And she told me, mm-hmm. hey, don't take it. Like, don't take it. It's going to numb you out. Mm. And I was like, all right. As we are playing Uno, literally, we got one round and everybody just zombied out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like, you, <laughs> like some people started drooling, not mm-hmm. because they wanted to. It was just that powerful. Just and I was happened. like, "Wow." Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm not taking that. I, there has to be another alternative, and my alternative was like pretty much writing, mm-hmm. um, and just writing and looking at my pain on the paper, right? And realizing this is the trigger. Mm-hmm. My parents is my trigger. 
being a product of my environment was my trigger. All of the years of the PTS was a trigger for me. You know what I mean? It was like, you know, being a product of my, like I was in shootouts numerous of times, not because I'm over there banging. It's just, that's just what it was, you know, Mm -hmm. you in high school and walking the street, wherever. So it was just like, it was a lot for me. So I just wrote it out and just worked out, changed the routine. Mm -hmm. Cause I think, I think at a certain age, I think you know who you are. I think you know your body better than anyone else. If you, if you know, like, okay, I have a chemical imbalance, let me get the help. But I didn't feel like I had a chemical imbalance. Now, the the only medicine that I really had to take was when I was battling migraines for mm, gotcha. nine months. Those are awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I literally had migraines every day and Oof. um, while I was going to school. And the worst thing was, like, the doctor, when I went to go get my MRI or, like, CAT scan, I mean, um, he was... Like, hey, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm like, dude. Uh, <laughs> grown man crying in his in his office, like instantly. Like, you don't know. You are a trained professional. Right. <laughs> like, you don't know. Like, I was like tears. I'm not even gonna lie. It wasn't even like I just hit it. It was just like, oh, you know, obviously, if he doesn't know what it is, <laughs> because cancer runs in my family. Yeah, yikes. that's the first thing I'm thinking, you know. So I'm crying, and the first thing I did was just like chug Henny, <laughs> Henny 151, whatever I could chug. But mm-hmm. that's all I did was like identify all the issues and really worked on it, and really worked on the issues with my parents and I worked on the issues with myself. And it didn't take it. It wasn't a three month process. It took like a two and a half year, three oh, years process of getting rid of that pain, you know, mm-hmm. and and being okay with it and learning like I can't change the past but I can't change my future exactly yeah yes, yes. I you would know. say acceptance for me has been definitely the most difficult part because I I've had um lots of trauma like pretty much in all the categories where there's like emotional abuse physical abuse sexual abuse verbal abuse like I've I've been through it my <laughs> entire life yeah. And um, even my final year in college, um, I dated a genuine psychopath and uh, he tried to murder me. And oh my goodness. Yeah, it, it was horrible. <laughs> like it was just the worst experience. And I, I developed like really severe, like not only did I have PTSD from that situation, but I had complex PTSD from just like being traumatized multiple times throughout my life. And um I always thought that if I forgave or accepted, that meant I was excusing that behavior and I couldn't wrap my head around why nothing happened to the people that harmed me. It was, um, I was like, why am I the one going through this? I'm being hospitalized. All the time. All the, yeah. You're feeling guilty about it. Mm -hmm. I can't connect with other people because they don't understand what I've been through. Like I, I just, I felt really alone on top of being, I'm kind of awkward. So <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> you, you don't give off that, that vibe. Oh, you haven't Probably seen Probably because I'm a nerd myself, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I, uh, yeah, I'm one of those that like, there's absolutely nothing in front of me, but I'll trip over it. Like one of those people. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we, we're, we're the same. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was just like, this I would say yeah toward the end of the summer beginning of fall I finally like just accepted like these things happen to me and I don't have to be happy about it it's not me excusing that these people got away with horrible things it's it's just that I want to take control of my life I want to move forward I don't want to hold on to these things anymore because I kept them like all right here close to my heart and it I think keeping all those things close and keeping or staying angry and and staying hurt and staying confused it just it kept me from even like kind of like mentally aging like uh, I think a lot of the time I felt like I was probably stuck at around age 18 or 19 even though I'm in my 30s now but like because you're still in the past yeah, yeah I I hadn't really like like I say, I, I went through college and I graduated. I was in the Air Force, but like still mentally, I was like a child almost. Yeah. And um, in letting go of that and um, losing the fear of um, 
going through an emotion when it comes up. Like now, uh, if I feel like I'm going to cry, I just let it happen. But before I used to like just hold my breath and kind of like, you know what, push it down. Oh. We'll be fine. We don't have to deal with this right now. But I, it's um, actually letting the emotion happen understanding why it happened and letting it pass oh my god that has changed yeah. everything yeah. <laughs> you know you did something on your instagram uh, a few weeks ago or maybe mm -hmm. months ago i can't keep up nowadays man but you did <laughs> something but it's not about when you did it but it's how you did it you did something that i thought was brave something that i had to do and something that i encourage people to do you literally wrote all your pain down Oh yeah. <laughs> and then you burned it. I was, oh my, if you could have seen me, I put down the phone, I'm clapping. I'm like, yes, that's oh. what I'm talking about. Because that's the only way you can let go. Mm -hmm. Like even like, you know, there's stuff that you probably talk to yourself in a way where you, you can't even imagine. You're like, man, let me write this down. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm going to take, as you said, control of my life. And I'm going to get rid of all that anger, that hurt, that bitterness, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to burn it down. Mm -hmm. that was yeah. phenomenal it like was... i would love to like reshare that if i can yeah, like I, yeah. because people, that it's powerful you mm -hmm. know i do a lot of writing not because i'm the best writer i I'm, i gotta release my emotions exactly you know i got and sometimes i can't you can't release everything to everyone you know what i mean right. sometimes you just want to keep it to yourself where it's like man i'm mad because this guy cut me off I'm not going to DM somebody. I'm not going to talk to like my friend or my mom or anybody like that about that. You know, I'm just like, all right, you know, I'm mad about this. I'm mad about this. And letting that out. That's something that I encourage a lot of people. Me being a life coach now, I encourage mm -hmm. a lot of my clients. Hey, sit down, write it down. Take a moment yeah. to yourself. Take 15 minutes to yourself and just write it down. Not, but I got to do this and this. And I'm like, yeah, but you can sit down and play 2K. You can sit down right. and, and play Madden. You can watch Ozark. Mm -hmm. Sit down and do this. This is important. Ozark can go any, you can play it anytime. 2K, exactly. it's just a game. Like, it's not real life. This is your life. Take control of it. This is real it. life, exactly. Yes, this is real life. All right. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I have to let, this is it. I have to let you go. <laughs> this was a powerful <laughs> episode. Um, please tell the people how to find you and where they can find you at and Ooh, um, what you're doing. Well, I have my blog. It's uh, noirmemoir.com. Um, my handle is Noir Memoir on pretty much all the social media outlets. And I actually am going into coaching pretty soon. So I'm really excited about that. So yeah. Hang in there and uh, wait for that announcement because it's coming soon. So I'm <laughs> really excited. Yeah, do it on your terms. Don't, don't, don't force yourself. Do it on your, tone, yeah. your terms when you feel like you're ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you. This was the Just Believe podcast. Until then, we see you next week. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, likewise.